sixth candidate speaking today is Greg Newman. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having us today. My name is Greg Newman uh, from Hendersonville. I, I'm married, been married 25 years. I have three kids, Ryan, Alexis, and Parker. All three of those kids have been homeschooled at one point. Uh, I say we by my wife, uh, uh, but they've been in public school. They are in public school now. My youngest son is in the uh, only charter school in Henderson County. So when I hit, heard Mr. Winnie uh, advocate uh, for charter schools, I, I hope that we do lift the uh, restrictions on those. Those charter schools are very, very advantageous to us. I'm a practicing lawyer in Hendersonville. I'm a former prosecutor. I uh, prosecuted in the states of Ohio and in Tennessee before returning home to Hendersonville, where I'm in the private practice of law. And I uh, have handled anything from capital murder cases right down to some of the uh, some of your uh, lower level felonies and misdemeanor cases. I uh, served as mayor of Hendersonville from 2005 until December of uh, last year. I uh, announced uh, earlier in 2009 that it was uh, my intention to seek uh, the congressional office, and in fact, I announced to make that official uh, last fall. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the reason I'm running is that uh, I'm fed up with our congressman in, uh, in particular saying one thing and then doing another. And it's not right to have any of our office holders say one thing and then not back it up with their vote if they go to Raleigh, if they go to Washington. It's not right, for instance, when we have almost 50,000 unemployed people in the 11th congressional district to come home and talk about wanting to create jobs. And yet then he goes to Washington and he votes for the cap and trade bill and then he votes for the union car check bill and then he comes back home and he says he's a fiscal conservative. And then he goes back to Washington and when President Obama produces a $3.6 trillion budget, which incidentally will give us almost 10 years of trillion dollar deficits, he votes for that. He then comes back and talks about this blue dog group that he's with and how they're socially and fiscally conservative. And last year, he, not voted, he didn't vote once, but he voted twice to raise the debt ceiling on the budget. In other words, the budget numbers meant nothing to them. They raised that to the point that our, our debt this year, our national debt, at the end of this year will be approaching $14.1 trillion. The deficit that was always supposed to be $1.9 trillion is going to be close to double that. It's not right to keep coming home and telling us that he's pro-life, pro-Second Amendment rights, pro-traditional marriage, and yet he continues to vote for a Speaker of the House that is openly opposed to all of those positions. <laughs> he's been in four years. He has no plan to, to attack the deficit spending. I, my plan is to close, not to cut, but to close the Departments of Education, Energy, Homeland Security. I want to get behind a very progressive, a very uh, proactive, a very, uh, a very assertive plan by a Republican, Paul Ryan of Wisconsin. His roadmap for America is to put this country back on fiscal footing for the years to come. It reforms the individual income tax uh, uh, rates, our corporate income tax rates, and then more importantly than that, it helps to save our Social Security and our Medicare portions of the budget all of which will be insolvent here in about seven years if we don't make much needed and very important reforms. And you know what the opposition party will say? Oh, here they go. The Republicans are removing the safety net from our people. We are going to have to be prepared to make the hard votes to tell everyone what we're doing, why we're doing it, and why it means that we'll be viable, viable economically for the years to come. Now, one thing that concerns me about our congressman is this. During the health care debate, he called his office. He kept saying that he was undecided about his vote. After he voted correctly in the House vote, then the Senate uh, spent Christmas Eve voting on their version. So that bill was out there for two and a half months. And he made the comment to the actual citizen. He said, I, I just want to give myself some wiggle room. And until I know the details of the final bill and the process, I am reluctant to draw a line in the sand. Look, we need a congressman from the 11th Congressional District that will go to Washington, D.C. and draw a line in the sand. A resolution that he says is PAYGO. We adopt the PAYGO rules. Well, you know how well that's working? Last week, the University of Bill Times News said PAYGO goes out the window. They're already violating their own rules because it's words. Words that mean nothing to them. They'll come tell you one thing and go do something else. It's not right. This is our year. 
to take back that seat and to go fight for our people. We have a lot of people hurting here in this district. We have, we're losing many factory jobs in this district. Somebody needs to go fight for these people. And you know what? I want to draw a line in that sand. I want to be the congressman that draws a line in the sand to increase our job, uh, our, our, our uh, workout base, our job base here in this district, to stop the uh, reckless spending and, and to uh, control the debt, and to stop this country from moving towards socialism. My name is Greg Newman. If you haven't voted yet, I need to hear from you this week or May 4th. Thank you very much.